Pharmaceutical giant Merck reporting second quarter results, coming in with strong revenue growth that was driven by oncology and, va and vaccine sales. Joining us right now to break it down in a Squawk Box exclusive interview is Merck's chairman and CEO, Rob Davis. And Rob, first of all, welcome. Great to see you. There is a little bit of noise in the numbers. We should break this down. The company reported a loss of $2.06, much uh, smaller loss than had been anticipated by the street of $2.18. That's because of acquisition costs, and we can talk about that in a moment. But if we strip that out and you look at the underlying results, we just mentioned oncology and vaccines, and I guess that's Keytruda and Gardasil were the big drivers of results this time? Well, yes, and, and by the way, thank you for having me on this morning, Becky. But to your point, we had a, a really great quarter. I couldn't be more proud of how the team is continuing to, to execute. And what you really see, as you pointed out, is strong, sustained underlying growth. And we grew 15 percent or 14 percent in the quarter, if you exclude uh, the impact of Agabria, which is our, our pandemic therapeutic. And it was driven by oncology and vaccines, which really the foundation of both those is Keytruda in oncology and Gardasil 9 and, and the Gardasil franchise in vaccines. So Keytruda, I, I guess, being used in, in, in new ways all the time. I think the most promising new studies that we've seen have been in, in uses against breast cancer. Well, so what you're referring to is we have recently received approval both in metastatic and in the adjuvant, new adjuvant setting for triple to negative breast cancer which has really been driving a lot of the growth uh, in the United States last year and into this year, and uh, now starting to do the same as it's launching outside the United States, particularly in Europe. So that has been an important part of what is driving Keytruda. But in reality, we're seeing growth across all of the different tumor types we're operating in. And in fact, what you're seeing is us increasingly move to earlier stages of cancer, which has been a big push for us, because we believe as we do that, uh, we can start to maybe talk about uh, cures for cancer if you can catch the disease early enough. So that's been a big focus, as well as expanding across a broader tumor range, which now uh, uh, really uh, encompasses multiple different tumors with focus. And obviously, you mentioned breast, but also continuing strength in lung cancer, uh, uh, renal cell carcinoma, head and neck cancers, melanoma, just to name a few. Let's talk a little bit about Prometheus and that acquisition. Uh, that's the reason for the loss that you're reporting on earnings per share is how you account for that. This company does a lot when it comes to Im immune uh, re overreactions and trying to address those issues. Right. But a lot of those are still early stage. And what do you anticipate? When, when do you see a pipeline that's really up and running there? Well, as, as we look at, you know, with really the opportunity that Prometheus brings, it is across uh, a broad swath of, of different autoimmune diseases, um, but our particular focus to begin with is uh, going to be in ulcerative colitis and then in Crohn's disease. And you know we're, we are continuing to progress and actually expect to start new studies uh, in, in ulcerative colitis yet actually this year in the fourth quarter. And you're looking probably with benefits coming more as you look to the mid to the you know, 25, 26, 27 timeframe uh, as we think about what that drug can be. The benefit really is going to carry as we move out into the later part of this decade and into the next, where we see both ulcerative colitis and Crohn's being each multi-billion dollar opportunities. But most importantly, we can make a real difference for patients because you know, these are devastating diseases uh, they're still largely unmet. While there are therapies out there, patients tend to cycle through them. So we hopefully will be bringing what will be a best-in-class, first-in-class medicine, uh, which we think can really be a game-changer for, for patients in, in these areas. Rob, you're raising your guidance for the full year. Uh, revenue guidance uh, raising pretty significantly, 58.6 to 59.6 billion dollars. You now see the streets at the very low end of that. For full year adjusted earnings, you're now talking about increasing from uh, to 295 to 305. The street was at 290, so that's as much as 15 cents better when you're talking about a, a beat of about 12 cents for this quarter. What do you see that leads you to think the second half could uh, the, the second half of the year could really continue to to beat expectations? expectations? Well, it is really the confidence we have in the underlying strength of the business. Uh, you know, we continue to see just phenomenal growth. If you look in oncology, Keytruda grew 21 percent 
uh, in the second quarter. It's uh, over $6 billion. It's $6.3 billion. That's the first time we've been over $6 billion in a quarter. Uh, we see, we're seeing growth with Gardasil of 53 uh, percent, which is strong growth with revenues of $2.5 billion. So for both of those, while we see growth slowing a little bit in the back half of the year, Overall, we see strong growth to the full year, and the guidance range you're, you're referencing implies growth of about 10 to 11 percent if okay. you exclude the, the one-time impact from Legevrio uh, and, and foreign currency. So it is, it is a strong beat, and then we are carrying that through to the bottom line. So what you're seeing is we beat in the quarter. We beat expectations on the top line by about $600 million. We also beat on the bottom line. We're carrying $800 million to the full year on the top line. Underlying uh, all of the different moving parts, there's about 24 cents but of operational strength that's actually driving that guidance raise. So we feel good about where we are, and it's really uh, just the sustained uh, momentum that these important drugs have. And I really I think it really speaks to the impact they're having for Rob. patients.